This is the Sony FX30, not to be confused with its older sibling, the Sony FX3. The Sony FX30 was released over a year ago and today I'll be sharing everything that makes this camera worth every penny of its $1,800 price tag. Do something cool! going snowboarding. This week I'm going to Canada, so I'm excited to share with you guys some awesome snowboarding content. Until then, thank you for tuning in to yet another video. My name is Nabil Kasim, and on this channel I share with you the best tips on cameras, photography, and videography. As you're watching this video, if you enjoy what you're watching, Please, please, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Today, we are talking about the Sony FX30. This is a camera that I purchased shortly after I bought my first Sony a7 IV, which is my hybrid photography videography camera. And I got the Sony FX30 and was happy to stumble upon it because it was a budget friendly option for a professional grade video camera that could act as my main camera when I was shooting both photos and videos at a wedding or could act as a great secondary backup camera, some might call a B cam, in case I was shooting just photography or just videography. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about the technical specifications. The camera has a 26 megapixel APS-C crop sensor, which can shoot in 4K Ultra HD over sampled from the 6K sensor at a frame rate of up to 60 frames per second. It can also shoot in 4K at 120 frames per second with a 1.6 crop factor. This could be a good or a bad thing depending on if you're trying to get closer to your subject or not. If you're using a certain type of lens, this can help you get a little bit of range with that 1.6 crop factor. Because in the end, you still are getting that 4K resolution. The camera has in-body image stabilization, which means that the sensor is actually moving around inside the camera body to help keep it stable. On top of that, it has the standard image stabilization along with an active image stabilization which uses an additional crop and uses the software to stabilize. The camera can also shoot in 10-bit 422 S-Cinetone color profiles with an S-Log3 gamma profile. And this means that you can get a very high dynamic range in your colors and allows you to uh, color grade your footage with more flexibility. Additionally, you can upload up to 16 LUTs to this camera so that you can apply them directly within the camera to preview them, or if you want to apply them directly to the footage itself to save you an extra time in your post-production. The camera comes with a 3-inch LCD touchscreen display which fully articulates around and it uses the standard NPFZ100 Sony batteries that you'll see in most professional grade Sony cameras these days. The camera has six, count them, six anchor points, quarter 20 inch threaded uh, screw holes where you can uh, either attach uh, peripherals to the camera itself and it uses the standard E-mount Sony uh, mounting system for lenses, so you can use all of your favorite Sony lenses. With that, let's get into some of the highlights that I think make this camera a standout filmmaking camera, whether you're a beginner or if you're expert level looking for a backup camera. The first thing I would mention is the build quality. This camera has a very nice gray metallic finish to it and it feels extremely solid in the hand. You have a nice wide grip 
So you can hold this camera handheld and be able to shoot very stably. It's visually identical to its full frame predecessor, the Sony FX3, which costs nearly twice as much as this camera does. This camera has front and rear tally lights, which means that when you press the record button, you'll see that the record button lights up in red, giving you an indication that the camera is indeed recording so that you don't end up missing the shot. I've definitely found times where I've questioned myself whether I've set up the camera and hit the record button and in the end wondered if I was actually recording or not. Another nice feature about this camera as a filmmaking camera is that it's got a zoom lever. I don't know what the technical term is for this, but essentially this lever allows you to use the power zoom if your lens is equipped with that. For example, my 18 to 105 crop sensor lens does have a power zoom lever on it. So that means I can control the zoom of the lens directly from the camera body itself by using this lever here. Alternatively, you can customize the function of that button if you like uh, to be able to do other things. For example, change certain settings on your camera or access a certain feature. You'll notice that this camera has built-in fans, which makes it so that you can set this camera up and not have to worry about overheating in any type of hot weather. If it's a hot summer day and you're just setting up this camera and it's recording in 4K, 30 frames per second for up to 30 minutes to an hour, overheating is definitely an issue that other cameras have. This camera does not. I've set this up as a B camera recording a wedding ceremony that was close to 30 or 40 minutes and it had no issue staying cool during that whole time recording in 4K 30 frames per second. There's tons of customizable buttons around the body as well so you can really tailor those to how you want to be able to control the camera while you're shooting and making films. I can make a video like that if you guys would like to see. Let me know in the comments below. This camera with the latest firmware update also allows you to shoot using Cine EI, which is a feature that maximizes the high dynamic range of your ISO. And that essentially sets your camera to one of the dual native ISOs that's built into your sensor. So this camera's dual native ISOs are at 800 ISO and 2500 ISO. And this is, these are the settings for your sensor that will ensure that you have the most high dynamic range, giving you the flexibility to color grade and color correct in post. This camera also has two CF Express Type A card slots which makes it super useful if you want to be able to record in the highest bit rate on this camera. And also you can get very high storage capacities with these professional grade memory formats. Uh, they will definitely run you a premium. I think I purchased two 320 gigabyte cards for nearly a thousand dollars. So they're definitely not cheap, but if you plan to use this as a professional camera, maybe worth looking into to help future-proof your investment. One of the last things that I'll mention as a highlight to this camera is the fact that it's got a 26 megapixel crop sensor on it, which means that I can use this for photography and get pretty high resolution photos out of this. In fact, I've actually used this as my B camera for with its color signs produce some pretty vivid images. Now I would be remiss if I said that this camera was perfect. There's definitely a few things that would make this camera even better. One of the things is the fact of how bulky of a camera body it is. Given that it is a video camera, it's not a huge deal. But for a crop sensor camera, I typically expect the camera body to be a little bit smaller. On top of that, I've found that the organization of the buttons and the interface here is quite different from Sony's normal photography cameras. 
So I found it a little bit difficult to uh, get used to that, especially switching back and forth from something like my Sony a7 IV, which I'm using about 90% of the time, and switching to this uh, to be able to find all the right settings in the buttons. Because there's a different button set, can't customize it the same way as I do for my Sony a7 IV. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to yet another video. I think that's all for the Sony FX30 here. Would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a strong professional grade filmmaking camera and want to be able to reuse uh, your Sony lenses uh, across your set of cameras. This is a great option for you, especially if you don't want to break the bank or if you're a beginner looking to get into filmmaking. This camera definitely helped me learn a lot and get me to where I'm at today. So if you haven't already and you made it this far in the video, please don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. I also have my newsletter going, coming out in just a few days here as we are nearing the end of February. And we're gonna get a whole new set of wallpapers. So you definitely don't wanna miss that. Got some great photos planned for this month's wallpaper set, both desktop and mobile wallpapers. You can find the link to that newsletter down in the description below. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.